Hi, welcome to the table with Tony Day. I'm Tony Day. Today, we're going to be talking about the Robin Crawford interview on the Tired Ass Red Table Talk with Jaina Pinkett. Um, pretty much, Robin has a book entitled A Song for You. Um, I love you, Whitney, or something of that matter. I hope I'm not getting the book in the title wrong, but it, the name of the book is called A Song For You. Um, pretty much, for y'all that don't know, I have to break it down. Whitney Houston is the most successful vocalist in, of, of our generation. Um, we all know the voice, we all know the talent. During the 80s, when Whitney, you know, came, when she, her first album came out in 85, I believe. And, you know, through the 80s, through the, through the mid-80s to all of the 90s, she reigned supreme, her, Mariah, and Celine. Um, during, I can remember from my own regulate recollection something around the 88 89 era i was seven um rumors started coming out about that whitney was a lesbian that you know she was gay that that was the rumors and that she was dating that she was going with her assistant um which is crazy to say and i'm not joking when i say this when i was younger i used to my mentor used to be a um, principal, of a, a doctor, and um, he was a principal. So he knew somebody that used to work at CBS Records, and he used to always come back to me and tell me the stuff that was going on. And, you know, <laughs> I would just go crazy over it. But he told me this one time that when he used to swear to me up and down, shout out to Dr. Weeks, how are you? Um, used to always tell me, that, you know, Whitney was gay, Whitney was gay, Whitney was gay, Whitney was gay. And I used to be like, well, why do you say that, Dr. Weeks? Why do you say that? And he was saying that Whitney had this thing with men that she wouldn't even let men come near her. She wouldn't even, wouldn't even kiss her father. And I'm like, what? You know, then, you know, they used to do skits on Mad TV. And they used to always throw a sidebar in, you know, about that. Okay. So, it was always rumored that... Whitney Houston got with Bobby Brown because it was her image that she needed Bobby Brown for her image because people started speculating that she was gay. So she apparently Robin um was working for Whitney whatever was working with work was working for Whitney for two years I believe no was work, working with Whitney I'm sorry for twenty years and. You know, she had enough. The rumor was that her and Bobby got into a physical altercation and Robin quit. But Robin, Robin says it was a lot of things, but more so of, of business reasons. Like, pretty much the business was tanking and Whitney was canceling shows and, you know, not showing up to studio time. And she got fired from the Oscars. So she was saying it was an abundance of things. That's the reason why she decided to terminate her employment with Whitney. But they still remain friends. And, you know... Um, she basically said that her and Whitney, you know, were in love and they were together sexually for two years and that, you know, Sissy didn't approve of it. And the reason that Whitney stopped it was because she was getting signed through Arista Records. And, you know, back then in the 80s, 90s, I can't believe it, I can say that now, gee, I'm getting old, but in the 80s and 90s. It wasn't, it was, things were different. Like people say back in the 80s, if you were black, you were black. If you were white, you were white. If you were gay, either you were gay, you were straight. It wasn't, you know, this sexually fluent, this, that, and the third, like how it is now where everybody just want to be pansexual, uh, abundant sexual, asexual, bias. It, it just, it, so pretty much back then, you know, you had to be, I mean, I had to be, but, you know, that's the choice she made. Um, so, um, pretty much, 
Robin pretty much spoke about, you know, you know, pretty much her life with Whitney and how even though her and Whitney stopped having sex, they were still spiritually connected. And how she, um, a rumor had broke out, a rumor had, a rumor was that Robin had had sex with one of Whitney, with one of the backup dancers, and Whitney jumped in the girl face and went in Robin's room and started ripping pages out the Bible, and you know, and it's just, you know, so, that's her story. Um, I thought that the interview itself, uh, she's been on like three shows, like she's doing a whole press tour. Um, I think out of all interviews, this probably have been the best because, you know, I don't know, it just seemed more at home. I can't believe I'm giving a Red Table Talks so a positive thing. But, um, a lot of people are having negative having negative reactions to the book because the negative opinions of the book because they're feeling as though why wait till now Whitney's not here anymore and it's like one sided um I personally feel as though that Robin just like anybody else we all have a right to tell our story no matter who we are we all have a right to tell our story you know um it's a lot of things that she spoke about and it's good that I can remember a lot of these incidents. Like, she speak about, well, we all remember this, uh, the, those of us that are old enough to remember the whole, the boat, the boat incident where on the honeymoon where, her, where she came back and she had glass that she had got cut, with, had a cut on her face because she supposedly got cut with glass or whatever. We all remember that. Um, then it was the incident with the telephone now. When Whitney, when Whitney was on Oprah in 2009, she spoke about an incident where she went to Bobby's house. No, she was, they was at the house or whatever. And she threw him a birthday party. And they came back in the house. And she was on the phone or something. And he came downstairs and he just hog spit in her face. And she said she took the phone and cracked him upside his head. And Bobby, Christina was standing there asking, why did you crack my dad in the head? Now, in the book, from what Jada says, I didn't read the book yet, but is it even out yet? But um, what Jada says is that, well, in the book, Robin say in the book, this is what Jada says, Robin say in the book, just to not to quote, get any misquotes, but... She, her and Whitney and Robin went to Bobby's house and they knocked on the door. Bobby came outside in a rage and spit in Whitney's face and it took the phone that he was on and hit her over the head with it and drug her in the back room and started beating her up pretty much. I, you know, it's just a lot of things in there that I want some clarification on. I just have a lot of things I just want some clarification on. And one thing about Whitney Houston thing about the death that she that does raise when they got to the part about her death or whatever. You know, she was saying that it's it's kind of funny that how Whitney Houston, how Whitney, and they call her Nippy, was such a great swimmer, but yet she died drown, drowning. And they, I don't know, it's just weird. But, and... She was seeing how, excuse me, all these people were working with her, but it just seemed like everybody, nobody was around when the situation happened. That's a whole nother story. That's a whole nother video. But she would, you know, pretty much just talking about her hurt and pain. And then she was saying how, you know, after Whitney died, people would run up to her on the street and blame her for leaving and saying it was her fault because she left her alone. You know, so she deals with a lot of um, hurt with that. And you, of course, it, of course, you know, it was one part of the interview when Jada just had to make it all about her. I mean, she just had to throw it, throw in the whole situation with Tupac in there, which is sad enough, sad of, sad of itself. You know, I remember when they was doing videos at King's Dominium and all that. But you know, it wasn't about you, Jada. You know, we we want to hear your story about Pac, but I don't think right now was the time for you to be talking about that. But um, 
that's pretty much it. Um, oh yeah, Robin brought her brought her wife out, and um, I kind of really felt like in the first two minutes of her interview, she was trying to throw throw little subliminal shots at Whitney. You know, but um, that's pretty much it. Um, I can't wait to read the book. I think I am going to read it. Um, when you get a chance, check out the Red Table Talk. Um, with Jada Pankin and him, you know, that show. I mean, I wish Facebook need to give me a damn show shit. But, you know, um, shout out to Jada, to the Smiths. You know, I know I give them a hard time, but, you know, it's all one love at the end of the day. Because Will is from Philly like me. I, um, shout out the Dolphins Water Ice if you're here in, um, in the metro area, in Atlanta metro area. Um, check out their Instagram page at Dolphins Water Ice. They're um they're constantly on the move, so they're just look up and see what park or what recreation center they're gonna be at the day. If you haven't had an Italian water ice, it's a Philadelphia custom. Make sure you do. I promise you you'll love it, okay? It's fat free, it's dairy free, and it's gluten friendly. Alright? So take care and I'll holler at y'all later.